My name is Florence and welcome to another video by Kenya Crime Daily. By the way, at Kenyan Crime Daily, we cover Kenya-based crimes solved and unsolved on a weekly basis. If this is content you enjoy watching, you should definitely consider subscribing to this channel. Let's get started. This is the case of Caleb Otieno. So if you guys are not aware, Caleb Otieno died on the 25th of March following an accident in which he fell inside a molten steel boiler at Blue Nile Steel Rolling Mills. A little bit more of a background into Utieno. So Caleb Utieno is originally from Kisumu. He moved to Nairobi immediately after his Form 4. That was about 10 years ago. And he started working off as a casual or casual laborer at Bidco Africa before he got this opportunity to work at Blue Nile Rolling Mills Company. He had been with the company for seven years until his tragic death. The Thika County DCIO Joseph Thuvi told press that when they visited the facility on Sunday, immediately after the incident happened, they were able to collect ashes and particles that seemed like pieces of bones from the furnace. The accident is being treated as a normal workplace incident at this stage. Mr. Joseph Thuvi, uh, who I believe is the Thika West DCIO, confirmed the incident. Obviously, the family was shocked, um, especially after being informed uh, by the company that his body could not be retrieved due to high temperature boiler that processes steel products. Otieno's brother said he received a call from one of Otieno's colleagues to report that his brother had been involved in an accident. Otieno had worked at the company for seven years. So here's a bit of a timeline of events leading to Otieno's death. Otieno was always paired with a colleague with whom he took shifts for lunch. So obviously, shortly after 1 p.m., that colleague left to get some lunch for him and Otieno. Otieno fell into the melting machine, is believed, at around 1 p.m. and obviously died on the spot. By the time the colleague was coming back with a meal, um, he was informed that his colleague Otieno was no more. The company immediately informed police and obviously the police, arri the police arrived immediately and the police was told that his body had been reduced to liquid and couldn't be traced in the mixture of melted steel. Tino's task in the factory was feeding the metal pieces through a rolling mill into a blazing furnace. So it's believed or, was, um, you know, it's being reported by some of his colleagues he may have fell in. Otieno's colleagues have eulogized him as a quiet man who was committed to his work. It's unfortunate we have lost him. I'm not able to comment further because the company has asked us not to, said a colleague. DCIO Joseph Thuvi, while speaking to press, said that the matter is under investigation, but preliminary investigations have shown that it was an accident and the deceased was not thrown in a metal boiler as it, as it is being alleged. Kale Butieno was laid to rest in Kisumu County on April 9th. Butieno's funeral was a closed coffin. So the family obviously is not pleased with the way the company has handled the matter. Uh, they argue that the company has not officially communicated to them in a way that expresses, you know, um, comfort and even, you know, just human empathy towards the matter. The family is alleging that their loved one was thrown into the boiler and they are also questioning the company's safety standards. Mr. John Aguambo said the company is not willing to tell us what happened or own up and take responsibility as our brother died within their factory. His colleagues told us he died after he fell into a boiler. Nothing official. Blue Nile Rolling Mills is a sister company of Blue Nile Wire Products Limited. They manufacture barbed wires and the companies are part of the Blue Nile Company or Blue Nile Group, I should say. Blue Nile Rolling Mills Limited have recently announced that they have received 862 million Kenyan shillings from the International Finance Corporation, which is a private lending arm of the World Bank. The funds, are, the funds are intended to expand the thicker branch of the company where the late Otieno was an employee. So again, this is just very interesting that they have received such a huge amount of funding 
but they are still going on about this compensation. The company offered the family 420,000 Kenya shillings as a payout. Martin Oraro, 74, previously said he was stunned that despite the family's grief and the pain of not even having a body foreclosure, his son's employer would place such a trivial price on his son's life. Whenever Martin received the news of the death, he traveled to Nairobi and met with the company HR and management. He was accompanied by Thika DCIO Joseph Thuvi during that visit. The company offered him 100000 on the spot. When he asked for clarification, the company HR told him he would be compensated a third of 21,000 Kenya shillings, which was Otieno's basic salary. After that, there was no further communication from the, from the company. Then they came back with the offer of 420,000 Kenya shillings. A lawyer who is not involved in the case, but is familiar with such cases, has said in a quote, the compensation some family of Caleb Otieno ought to be paid under the Law Reform Act. Um, it's supposed to be about, he's calculating it at about 2.9 million minimum, meaning he's being compensated, uh, assuming he worked up to 60 years. So obviously we can see that there's a standoff between um, the family and the company and looks like they're heading to court. So I believe that several lawyers have approached the family expressing interest in taking on the case to court on their behalf. Not sure if this is pro bono or if it's a paid service. So far, the company has refused to comment on the matter. Uh, when they, they were contacted by the press, um, they refused, both, both HR and uh, the company head refused to comment on the matter. So again, I will be following up on this case uh, for you. I will let you know how it progresses. My prayer at this point is that the family is compensated. I think 2.9 million would be reasonable. You know, like nobody can bring back your son, but at least that compensation probably will make your life a lot easier. And probably, I don't know, it doesn't ease the pain, but you know, just makes your life a little bit easier. So again, my deepest sympathy goes out to the family. Uh, may God comfort you and give you the strength uh, to fight through this case. And I hope um, you awarded this compensation. Thank you so much for coming back. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you like, make sure you're commenting, make sure you're subscribed to this channel uh, because I'm giving you cases now almost every single day. So thank you so much. I'll catch you.